in our co-main event of the evening. Brave Combat Federation presents three five-minute rounds of professional mixed martial arts in this heavyweight bout. Introducing first, in the blue corner, fighting out of Sweden, weighing in at 119.6 kilograms with an undefeated pro record of two fights and two wins, Erman, the people's champ, Smagic! Across the cage, his opponent stands in the red corner. Fighting out of Vienna by way of Turkey, weighing in at 108.4 kilograms with a pro record of five wins and three losses. Fatty at cash! Here we've got the tail of a tape. Smite seven years of a senior of Fatty Akdash and taller as well at two meters even. A sizable difference in height there. It also has to be said that Ierman has to cut weight to make the 120 yeah. kilogram. He was in the, the sauna on Friday with the smaller guys cutting weight. <laughs> and it seems like we've got some kind of issue with a glove here. Fuck the Akdash. Some Vaseline perhaps, or? Referee Dickie Larkin always crosses the T's and dots the I's. That's why he's okay. one of the best in the business. For two heavyweight yeah, men, you need a heavyweight referee. Absolutely. There we go, touch of gloves. <coughs> and one thing you've got to keep an eye out for, it was actually the first thing I wrote in my notes on Irma Smash in huge capital letters, leg kicks. Yeah, his leg oh. kick. Look, look at the size of his legs, man. Yeah. They're huge, they're like tree trunks. And we've seen him kick people, and he has this propensity to send people spinning 360 degrees with the power of those leg kicks. Yeah, that's something we saw in his uh, pro debut here in Stockholm against Malik Jamaze. <laughs> in case people at home didn't quite see that or didn't feel that, when they pushed up against the cage, the entire cage wall moved. <laughs> yeah. I was actually looking down when it happened, but I felt the vibrations into the table and onto the seat that I'm sitting in right now. Nice knees and the clinch there from Irman. Huge grip. I'd like to see him fight for uh, the underhook on that left. Sorry, that right side of his. He has one on his left side. Kind of a little bit more control. Obviously, an incredibly powerful guy. And traditionally, Smyich, a, a very capable finisher. I mean, he's as a pro, he's never been to a, to a decision as well. And as an amateur, he's got, I believe, six round one finishes under one minute very dangerous guy and as you say it's a real sort of jekyll and hyde character is human smile he's a very funny guy very likable guy but once he gets in there it's all about the bad intentions and there have been some suggestions for as well to add something about his dental hygienist occupation into his nickname but nothing that's really stuck yet so far the people's champ definitely is the right nickname yeah nobody was really biting on uh, jokes about <laughs> the dental hygienist were they i don't think so but as you say the people's champ a fitting moniker for the big man beloved here not just stockholm but in the entirety of sweden absolutely He's very intelligent, the game plan he's, uh, he's adopting right now. He's just forcing Fatih Akhtash to, to, to carry his weight and now scores the takedown. And smartly done. I mean, when you have an opponent who is creden as credentialed in striking as uh, Fatih Akhtash is, I mean, why give him that advantage? He might as well take him down to where you're super strong. Yeah, completely nullifying the, the, the main weapons of the uh, former Austrian national Muay Thai champion and now just forcing him to carry his... 120 kilogram frame. I do not envy Akdash doing so. He is on a guillotine with one arm, but it's nothing really that he's going to get from that position. If Ehrman chooses to transition into side control, there's potential there for a, a Von Flu choke, seldom seen in mixed martial arts. Yeah. Or the Von Pru choke, depending on yeah. how quick you came to MMA. Depending on who is in the cage, you, <laughs> might, you might see it a lot or not at all. Again, in that half guard anchor position. Much more advantageous position for Smyich now, getting out of that uh, out of that guillotine. And Akdash going for heel strikes from the bottom. Heel strikes from bottom to the calf. That's probably the first time I've seen that. 
I think there we got the first bit of decent, like hard ground and pounder from Smyche. Smyche thinking about posturing, but again, right now he's he realizes they have three five minute rounds. He's availing yeah. of the time. He's smothering Fatih Akhtash. To be fair, Akhtash, he does have pretty decent cardio. I mean, like we said, he hasn't been out of the first round much, but when he did, he looked good in the second round. Incredibly durable fighter. And again, that was veteran savvy covering the mouth by Irman Smajic there. Let's see if he can get some punches or elbows going here. Might be trying to momentarily look like he was trying to set up a, a head arm triangle. Fatih Aktas trying to do the right thing. He's getting up on the hip. He's trying to turn in towards Irman, but. It's very hard to mount any kind of offense against the Man Mountain. Even his little short pot shots are carrying so much weight and heft. Yeah, just those shots to the body there. I mean, you can really hear and feel them. Oof. Clubbing yeah. blows from the people's jump. I do not envy Fatih Akdash, who is actually the first fighter from Turkey to fight in Brave. Just methodical pace. Not to, oh, that's a big crushing shot to the body. You know that hurt because an elicited an immediate reaction from Fatih Akhtash. I mean, if you, if you look at you know, Smyach's fist, I mean, it's like, like, canned, like, just, like canned goods. Like, he's just swinging cans of beans at you. From this position, I'd like to see the people's champ perhaps throw a couple of people's elbows. All right, into the first round. Certainly a dominant yeah. round for Smyich, but not one where he mounted a whole I, I, I lot of offense. I'm going to speak to him now. I'm going to speak to him now. And Akash complaining to referee Deki Larkin about something. I'm not sure what. I think he may have been intimating there was possibly fingers in the so eyes, but here. I'll be honest, I didn't see a lot of that from, yeah. from our vantage point. Trying to posture off his face. Your fingers is going to have his eyes. There you see the takedown by Ehrman. Okay. And again, just methodical, constant work. All very intelligent, doesn't take any unnecessary risks. Yeah, I mean, he's taken pretty much no damage so far. It's looking pretty good. I mean, he was making Atash carry his whole weight for most of that first round, which is draining. Let's go. All right. Dickie <laughs> Larkin go, taking absolutely no nonsense there. <laughs> yeah. Making sure to hurry people out of a cage, rightly so. What's your finger? See here, round number two. So far, Akdash not able to really mount any offense on his side, but obviously he was taken down. Did not manage to get up. Obviously, I'm sure he would like to keep the fight. Perhaps the, the game plan of Irman might have been to wear on him heavy in the first round, take a little bit of a little bit of pep out of his step. Which would be a very smart plan. Although Akash looks pretty fresh. And pretty good kicks thrown there. Some nice leg kicks as you've alluded to being thrown. Comes over the top with a big overhand. But then he shakes out the arms a little bit of a, a deep yeah. breath. Usually a sign of fatigue there. And obviously, I mean just just look at how big Irma Smyth is just carrying his weight for just a little bit. It's got to be completely exhausting. Smyth's doing well to close the distance. He was doing really, a really good job, a really solid job of creating his own angles there, just cutting off the cage. Definitely, and once he gets a hold of you, I mean, you're just in for a bad night. He takes the back in. This is not where Fatih Akhtash wants to be for the remaining four minutes of this round. Yeah, this is a bad position with so much time left for Irman Smyth to work. Hold the glove. Eamon trying to get a hand free to land some ground and pound. Him. And this is a little bit similar to the position that uh, Irmas Smaic finished uh, Malik Jamad in his uh, pro debut. Had him up against the cage and just pounded him out. He's trying to find gaps, trying to land those shots to get the hand through. As you say, staying so low, his hips are so close, so heavy to Fatih Akhtash, he's not giving him any room with which to find a way to get out of this position. Smyth's corner asking for small shots continuously. Gotta say, I agree, that is good coaching right there. You, you wanna keep your opponent guessing, even if you are in a dominant position, you don't wanna let either yourself or your opponent get complacent as such. You wanna keep them guessing. You wanna have just a little bit of doubt in them. And you also wanna stay proactive if you're in the dominant position. Yeah, absolutely, you don't wanna risk getting stood up. Mm. 
I mean, especially if you've been working hard to get to a position, spending a bunch of energy. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is that you use up so much energy, get getting your opponent down, you get complacent, and get stood up, and all that energy was for nothing. Swanch's corner calling for more ground and pound. And again, hard, heavy shots. He seems to be happy just to keep this position and land enough shots to keep himself and to keep Fatty honest. Trying to get that hand free to land those clubbing shots. I wonder if perhaps your man would consider maybe throwing some, maybe not for his position, but before it was, there was a, an opening for some potential knees to the body. This is a bad position for Fatih And you can see the, the frustration even just on the face yeah. of Aktash. Big man smiles, transitions oh, into the mount position. Mount. Here we could see some heavy, heavy ground and pound. Aktash needs to be careful not to give up the back. Oh, oh, people's elbow from the people's champ. There we have it. You called for it and he delivered. Just under two minutes left for Smash to work, and that, that could definitely be enough for a stoppage if he manages to connect with some more of those people's elbows. And it's going to be difficult as the man on the bottom to try and shift, well, potentially over 120 kilos off you because he had Probably, to cut down yeah. to make that 120 limit. Oh, oh. big cupping shots. It's almost shades of, of a cat toying with a mouse at this stage. Yeah, I mean. Smash just looks completely unbothered, very comfortable there in top position, taking his time, landing his shots. And it's just consistent, methodical work from the big man. Posture's up, may look and crash through that guard with big ground and point. Another elbow, I think just glancing or missed there. Less than a minute to go in the second round here. Smyich trying to find that opening. Smyich's corner saying to go for both the body and the head. So far we've seen mostly elbows to the ho to the head. Then I gotta agree, perhaps mixing things up there a little bit would be good. Little short pot shot elbows and a very, very dominant round from start to finish for Eamon Smyich. Could you make the argument this is potentially a 10-8 round? <sighs> you know what, you probably could. I mean. It perhaps lacks some of a damage for a very apparent 10 8 round, but just based on control and position and dominance, I think you could definitely make that argument. It would be interesting to see how our judges interpret that. Should we go to a decision? I mean, it would be a first for both. Ooh, just a hard elbow there. I think he just glanced with that elbow, not sure it made clean contact. Akhtash looks frustrated, obviously. I mean, he knows. He's up zero to two, or that he's behind zero to two here. Yeah. And realistically, to get anything out of this fight, he needs to go in and get a finish. Yeah, he needs to go there and just knock Smyich out of it. It's easier said than done. I mean, well, for a start, again, I mean, Akhtar, he does have a lot of power in his shots. Obviously, he's got a ton of finishes there. Four of his five wins by knockout or TKO. So he's got the potential to do it. But I mean, especially when you're worried about the takedown, you're mm. expecting it. It is harder to get fluid if you're striking. And having uh, having been ridden essentially by Airman for those two rounds, does he have it in his gas tank? Does he have the the, the cardio to throw a fight ending knockout punch? That's a good question. Let's see Let's here. And Let's I wonder also if we're going to see some of those people's leg kicks that I was hyping up a little bit before. I think this is a new territory for both men in professional mixed martial arts. The third round of a three round, five minute fight. Seems like Airman's corner a little bit displeased. Time, time. Telling him to work, to get things going. Just don't open the door. Don't open the door. Just give me the scissors. Referee Deke Largan calling for scissors, potentially a, an errant piece of material on the glove of one of the fighters here. Yep. There we have it, yeah. Little bit of the hand wrap, just coming a little bit loose as they tend to do sometimes during frenetic exchanges. Yes, coach. Yeah, Smyth just corner, really imploring him to get things going. I mean, he has been dominant, so there's no knocking his game like oh that, guys, just surgery? perhaps they haven't been able to get as much going as they were hoping this. for. 
<laughs> yeah, go on. Nice show of respect from the boys. You gotta love that. I mean, it went up, asked to that, hug. That yeah? was that was. Well, in one breath, adorable, but in one breath, terrifying. <laughs> big, big six foot seven, 120 kilo unit walks up to you and says, hug. What are you going to say, no? <laughs> <laughs> you can see the, the, the tentativeness of Fatih Akhtash trying to go high with the kick, but again, owing to the fact that he's had to carry the weight of Ermin Smaic for so long, has he got enough in the tank to land a... A home run, one header quitter. Yeah, he's got to be careful. I mean, he cannot get reckless. He cannot get carried away because, I mean, if he does, he's going to leave an opening and he is going to get taken down again. Superman punch there from Fatih Akhtash and Smaric fainting a bit of a kick. The corner of Irman Smaric calling him forward, asking for action. Have him right, right where he wants him. In his corner against the cage. Is he gonna get it? And on the single leg. Nice work from Akhtash to defend at the minute. Both these men may be a little bit tired. I think so. Due to the grappling heavy nature of this fight. Well, I mean, those have been some grueling positions. I mean, they're not necessarily the most explosive, but they do definitely zap your energy right out of you. No, we say this at nearly every show. Uh, a position like this, a 50-50 position, one man has an overhook, one man has an underhook. It doesn't look like anything's going on, but it's one of the most grueling aspects of the sport. Absolutely, and these guys have had quite a bit of that so far. There we have the takedown. Takes the ankle, pulls it out from underneath Fati Akhtash. And now he's in that anchor position. See if he can get some proper ground and pound. He's got plenty of time to work, just under three minutes. And Smarch's corner telling him to pass to mount. May just try and wriggle that leg free. But again, he can land ground and pound from this position. I know a lot yeah. of fighters, a lot of fighters feel more comfortable from that half guard position than they do yeah. full mount. Because I mean, at mount, while it is definitely a very advantageous position, you do always have a risk of being flipped over. Whereas if you're, whereas if you're in half guard, not necessarily. I mean, you can stay there pretty comfortably. And yeah, I, I agree. There are definitely fighters who do prefer that position. You can get some solid ground and pound going. I think the issue sometimes with mount is that if you overcommit to a strike. You take all of your body weight in one direction. Smy is just showing how do showing a new wrinkle in his game at Pro, just how dominant he is on top, how much he's able to to wear on his opponent, and he's complete completely nullified and neutralized the biggest weapons of Aktash, that being his striking game. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean that really is a sign of a, of a very skilled martial artist that you can take your opponents skill and just biggest strength and just make him into nothing i mean so far i don't feel like like smarch has been has taken a single strike that's been really significant a little bit of back and forth there between <laughs> Aktash and his corner i'd love to know what they're saying obviously frustration in my head, his corner's telling him to do something, and he's sitting back up high. <laughs> yeah. Look at the situation I'm in. It's not as simple as just get up. Yeah, I don't think any of his corner men have had this huge, just behemoth of a man on top of them for nearly three rounds. And it's it's not through lack of trying. You know, Axis is trying to advance his own position. He's trying to defend. Momentarily, you can see him trying to post on the point of the elbow. Irman has the wrist. And it looks like this will be, could very well be a first for both gentlemen as time is ticking away and none of them have been to a decision as a professional, so. But this is a, this is a fantastic learning experience for both men. You know, it shows that at the heavyweight, heavyweights aren't renowned for, for going the distance, but doing so and being able to impose his, his game plan and to be as dominant, that's bound to be a real feather in the hat, a real feather in the hat and growing the confidence of Eamon Smyche. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just to prove, if, if no one else, and to himself, that he can go three full rounds. I think we, we may see him up the pace momentarily for the closing stanzas of the third and final rounds. 
There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The big men go the distance. And I'm sure if at the start of this fight, at the start of this show, if you had said this was the fight that was going to go the distance, <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't have believed you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we did not... The records, the odds, the, the stats, just everything going against that. But then again, when we had the two strikers going against each other, we were joking about a first round submission, and that's exactly what happened. I whoa, mean, whoa, whoa, who was joking? Uh, who was joking? I, I think I made, I made a great call. Yeah, that's true. It was, it was, <laughs> it was crystal ball filled. <laughs> Here we see some of the action in the fight. Just that dominant positional control from Irman Smaic. Surely en route to a unanimous decision victory. And I mean, it's a style that is just a nightmare to face. I mean, having somebody that big on top of you. I mean, even if you have a really strong grappling game, I mean, sometimes so being that big, that strong, that heavy, it, just, it can nullify skill as well. Because as we said, Akhtash, he was trying. He was really trying his best to get up. It just did not work. For a cool main event, let's send it up to Lance Murdoch for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, in our co-main event, an epic clash. After three rounds of non-stop action, we consult the judges' scorecards. I can tell you it is a unanimous decision. He remains undefeated. The people's champ in the blue corner, Erman Slagic! No surprise there at all. Obviously, unanimous decision. A very unanimous decision, I might add.